guys. It is 9.02, so we're getting started. Welcome to our first virtual meeting of the new year. 2018 is here. Are you guys ready to rock? Yay! Okay, so all of you guys should be muted or, you know, mute yourself if there's a lot of background noise. Otherwise, I don't really care. Um, but welcome to 2018. Our new virtual meetings are going to be every third Monday of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So make sure you save those on your calendar um, so you can always attend and we'll always post a playback as well. So um, I would love to start out the new year with just a couple of good news. Um, so if you guys just wanna unmute yourself and tell me something good that's been happening in your business, maybe you tried something new, maybe you got your first team member, maybe you had your first show, maybe you just joined Pamper Chaff, who knows? Who wants to go first? Who's got some good news? I can go first. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> just one thing that was suggested on one of the calls recently was, if you're not, it was actually the, the Shonda, I think, I think it was. Oh, the to, social media training? Yeah, to practice yeah. doing live. So I created a secret group um just called live practicing and started practicing today so that was a it's kind of a big deal for me because i don't even like for you guys to see me like this so yay we love seeing you i love seeing people it just helps me connect with them a lot better and guess what that's going to help connect your audience to you too and yeah. guys yeah way to go so practice but sometimes just do it like yeah i will i will <laughs> don't I'll overthink it i mean people don't want you to overthink it they don't want it to be picture perfect some of my best videos is like when my kids like jump in and like go crazy and people love that stuff so way to go yay i can't wait to see your first live soon Thank you. Yay. Awesome. Who else has good news? Oh, Nikki, Nikki, unmute yourself. Let's go. Hey, Sorry. <laughs> Trying to feed the kids and do all kinds of crazy stuff right now. Super mom. Right. So let's see. I just hit $2,500 in sales in less than my 90 days, which I didn't even know until Claudia told me. Yay. Yay. <laughs> 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 and I have signed uh, a new person last week, and I have another girl signing tomorrow, and I have two interested people, and what? Uh, what else? I have a cooking show that made $800, which is my highest show yet. Um, I don't know. It's been a really good day. It's been a great <laughs> day. Does anyone want to know how Nikki's getting all these leads? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just doing it. I told Claudia I was going to do it and I did it. And that's all I know. What are you saying to these people now? Um, a lot of different stuff. I mean, I, for me, a lot of it is knowing who you're talking to so that you can personalize what you're saying. You know, I have one girl who is a stay at home mom and I've been taught, you know, I'm a stay at home mom, so I can relate to her. And I've been telling her, you know, I started this to have something for me because I know what it's like to be a stay at home mom and you just don't have that time to do stuff for yourself. Sorry, trying to do dinner here. Um, and so, you know, she could relate to that and she was like, Oh my gosh, I need me time. This would be perfect. And I'm like, I know. And I have another girl who, um, really loves pampered chef, but she just couldn't afford you know, to buy everything. And I was like, look, you can get $450 for $109 this month. And let me help you get 50% um, of that back with the rebate this month. So we got her with that. And, you know, I really, I really think it's knowing who you're talking to and making those connections. <sighs> yeah. So definitely don't just copy and paste, right? Yeah. The same recruiting message to everyone but yeah. always think about you know how could how could you guys help them um, as far as sharing this business goes awesome yeah okay i'm gonna mute myself again i'm gonna have okay. dinner yeah who else wants to go good news um, so this is dina i did my first vendor event <laughs> yay. so uh, yay <laughs> um it was an invite from someone that i asked um you know just looking for bookings and she said no and I just asked well who do you know that loves Pampered Chef you know asking for a referral and it turned into an invite to a vendor show 
and it was a rather small one, but I had 13 entries and over half of them are interested in parties. So um, I'm following up with them, but guys, don't wait. Don't wait for things to be perfect. I didn't have a Pampered Chef uh, tablecloth. I just brought my stuff. I brought a kitchen tablecloth out there and the kids stuff. And I got to tell you, kids are the best salespeople. My kids were with me. I had no babysitters. <laughs> I put my daughter in the, the kids' pamper chef hat. And they, she actually walked around and made contact. I thought it was so funny because she went around to the other booths and was talking to them with her pamper chef gear on. And those people came over to me. And I'm actually, I forgot to tell you, Claudia, I'm looking at, we're doing a collaboration with a nutritionist. So she wants to do a workshop on healthy eating. And then I bring the tools to help them meal prep and all that together. So, and then I also got um, a connection with the center that hosted it is a kids, um, it's a daycare center. And they placed a very large order for the kids stuff and asked me to come into the center and actually do a little cooking class just with the kids and i said that's great but can i send information home to the parents and they said yes so i'll put little goodie bags together <laughs> so um but i was scared to death i didn't know what i was going to say or what i was going to do but i just did it so, <laughs> so now we're in follow-up mode and we're going to make this happen so i'm excited Yay, and one potential recruit so yeah <laughs> Sometimes we're just a vendor show away or one party away from, you know, getting what you're looking for. So way to go. Who else has good news? I was there the fire you know, uh, I have one vendor that comes in the next three months. One vendor? So I, am I the only one having trouble hearing her? No. Okay. There's like a lot of shh. One vendor event per month for the next three months. Got it! Yay! And Allison just moved, if you guys don't know that, and that's definitely, um, I'm going to mute you again. There you go. That's definitely the way to go, right? Starting up at any new location. So awesome. Anybody else? Troy, did you want to share? I do want to share because I know uh, that Jess, or wait a minute, she was on the call. Is she She's still here? here? Jess Bolton? Yes. Yep. So, um, so Jess Bolton is a brand new team member who just joined. Yay. We did her kickoff show yesterday and she just decided um, she came to her first Pamper Chef party like as an adult last Sunday and then um, scheduled hers for yesterday. And I'm just super excited. And guess what? You guys are talking about vendor events. I met Jessica at a vendor event. She has another direct sell sales business, but the products don't compete with our products. So she loves to cook. She wants uh, new products in her kitchen. So this was like a no brainer for her. Yay. Welcome, Jess. Can you hear us? I don't know if she's, I can't see her. Yes, oh. I can hear Yay, you. Jess, welcome to our team. Do you want to share what Troy did or what sparked your interest? Why are you here? Well, like she said, um, I just need a new kitchen. <laughs> um, but... Um, what are you most excited about? I don't really know at this moment, other than getting rid of the crap that's in my kitchen now. Okay, so <laughs> getting a whole new kitchen store, right? Right at your house. Right. Let's make it happen. Double free is definitely the month for that. So welcome. I, I actually got my kit today. <gasps> that's the best Yay! part. So I made dinner, and right now I'm making dessert. God, post some pictures too. People love pictures of dinners and dessert and all that. Oh, stuff. well, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> next time, right? Right, next time. Awesome. Well, welcome. We're so excited to have you and just listen to what Troy tells you to do. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> awesome. Do we have anyone else that's new that just joined this month? Nobody else? Okay. All right. Well, listen, guys, um, any other good news? I think we have time for one more. No? 
Okay, then we'll get started because I don't want to hold up our guest speaker any longer. So, um, guys, I uh, on this call today, I'm so excited. Um, I have ex the newest executive director, Mary Haynes, on um, this call. And the beauty is, you know, once... Um, as we, you know, people are always like, oh, you know, we promote, what does that mean for us as a team? What do these promotions mean for us as, as a team? And it really opens the door to networking with so many amazing leaders in this company for us. And we're able to bring this training back to you. And, you know, just a fun, fresh, new voice. Um, Mary is actually homeschooling mom of four. Um, so she's a very, very busy mom. So I know we have some homeschoolers on our team as well. Um, and she's earned all three excellence awards in her first year, full year in the business and also Founders Award in Developing Leaders. So Founders Award is top 20 in the entire Pam for Chef company. Um, so I have asked Mary to come on because they're like a virtual rocking team. They're selling, they're growing like crazy. Um, and I just asked her to come on and, you know, kind of share her story a little bit of how she got into virtual parties. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of the how to's of the way her and her team um, do the things they do. So without further ado, further ado Mary, go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm super excited. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about me just so you kind of know where I came from and what, how I ended up here. Um, I do have four children, like Claudia said. Uh, we are homeschooling second, fourth, sixth, and eighth grade this year, which is kind of daunting. We're heading into high school, um, and that makes us super busy. And so my husband also works from home. We're home a lot. And um, I started my business back in August of 2015, and I was a hostess multiple, multiple times. I loved Pampered Chef. I had lots of Pampered Chef products in my kitchen, and um, I was looking at my husband, and I said, listen, um, the walls are caving in, and I need to get out of the house, and I said, I, I just I have to get out, and I said, listen, I have an idea, and he's like, okay, what's the idea, and I said, I'm going to go get a job at Target, because they give employee discounts, and I'm in there all the time anyway, and he was like, that's totally not going to work, because you have to work weekends, and holidays, and, and all those other things. And because we homeschool, we have the flexibility to travel whenever we want to. And he also telecommutes. He's an IT person. And so we just hop up and go. And so he said, that's totally not going to work. He said, what about Pampered Chef? And I was like, that's a really good idea. And so I contacted my consultant. She never asked me. So take note. You could have another executive director um, in your downline if you just ask. She never asked me. I contacted her. And I said, um, I was asking about the incentives and stuff. And I said, okay, so you're a director. So is there anything cool you get when you like do get to director? And she's like, well, there's fast track. And I was like, I want to do that. And so I fast tracked to director and I was the first person in my organization that did it of about 300 people. Yes. They really didn't know what to do with me. And so I, um, <laughs> And so I, I grew pretty quickly, but I will tell you after I fast tracked, I kind of hit a wall because you push so hard to get to that fast track goal. And, um, I was just kind of struggling like the next April, May, I was really struggling because we had, my husband and I are also day camp directors for our local Cub Scout organization. So we're for our county, we're the, the camp directors in summer. And so we're heavy planning in like April, May, June. And uh, I had no free time on my calendar. Like I said, we travel a lot and I'm looking at my calendar and I'm like, how am I going to get these two shows on my calendar? I wasn't really recruiting. So my team was struggling. We had 11 people on my team and only three of them were active. And so I was like, you know what, I'm in all these virtual party groups. I had tried like a couple of virtual parties and I was literally just throwing mud at the wall to see what stuck because no one in my organization did them. So I didn't know what I was doing. And I just said, you know what, I have to do virtual parties. This is the only way I'm going to be able to maintain my title and grow my business. This is just, this is all I have left. And so I started messaging people and asking, hey, I'm trying out something different. Would you be willing to be a guinea pig? And I found a couple people that were like, yeah, okay, I'll try it. And um, so I started those the very end of May. And by July, I had a full calendar 
of virtual parties. And by July, I was, I looked back at my stats. Um, I did $4,000 in just virtual party sales in July. And I was like, whoa, I was like, this works. <laughs> And so I, um, I've been pretty consistent. I'm an elite seller. And so I typically do anywhere from five to $6,000 a month in virtual party sales. I still do live parties, so I'm not completely virtual, but it is the bulk of my business. I usually only do about two or three live parties and that's only if someone asks. Um, I typically just book virtual parties. And so, um, I just wanted to kind of, Claudia was like, okay, tell us about the virtual party. So I just kind of wanted to tell you guys, you know, first of all, how I got into it and why I got into it. And then just kind of give you guys some tips and tricks that we've learned from doing virtual parties. Um, we have a team of about a hundred and I think we're up to like 140. Almost everyone is exclusively virtual. Um, we do have some that have stepped out of their comfort zone and are doing live parties, but most of us just are on Facebook. And um, most of us do, uh, my top sellers, my top performers, we're doing four to five virtual parties a week. So it's, it totally, totally works and it can be done. So first of all, the biggest tip I can give you guys, and this, if you take nothing else away from me tonight, I want you to treat your virtual parties just like you treat a live party. Okay. You cannot neglect your host. You cannot neglect the interaction. You cannot neglect all those things that we do for a live party. You have to do the same thing for a virtual party. That's one thing I learned very, very early. First of all, you must, must, must host coach. A lot of people look at virtual parties as just kind of a thing that they're going to throw into their calendar and post some stuff and hope the money just comes rolling in. That's not how it works. My Facebook party average is right around $600. Okay, that's high nationally, and that's because I host coach. I host coach the heck out of my hostesses. So we, I send my host a packet, just like I give them a packet at a live party. And guess what? There are invitations in that packet. I still encourage them to personally invite people, not mass invite 500 people onto their Facebook event, but to personally reach out. And so I, I give them a little message to, to copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. I keep it as simple as possible for my hostesses. So I tell them to send them something like, um, hey, Angela, I'm having a paper chef party on Facebook next week. I don't know if you saw your invite or not, but hope you can make it simple, but they need to personally message that to people, not group messages because that annoys people. Um, so I have them personally message. I give them catalogs and in my host coaching phone call, which I highly recommend. I have very few hostesses who will not get on the phone with me. I set that expectation up right when we book the party. So when I booked the party, I was booking one earlier tonight. I said, great, about two weeks in advance, I'm going to be in contact with you and let you know that your host packet is on the way. And then once you receive it, we're going to set up a time to chat and go over all the details for your party. And they're like, okay, cool. I don't get any questions about talking on the phone. It's just an expectation that I set. So once we get on the phone, I explain to them, I've got some extra catalogs in there and I've got paper order forms. We were like, well, this is a virtual party. Why do I need that? Because they have friends that aren't on Facebook, right? So I tell them during the host coaching, those catalogs are for your non-Facebook friends or your paper catalog people. Do you have paper catalog people? And they're like, yes, my mom is a paper catalog person or my aunt or the little lady from church. You know, those are all my paper. Yes, they want to see a paper catalog and say, great. So what you want to do is you want to start um, passing those out. There's some paper order forms in there. If they don't want to order online, totally fine. They can fill out the paper order form and then you can take a picture of it and text it to me or Facebook message it to me and I'll input it for you. So I'm setting the expectation from the very beginning beginning that they are going to collect orders outside the Facebook party. And most of my hostesses do. The other thing I say to them is I say my average host, I don't say my best host because um, then they'll be like, well, I'm, I'm not a best host. I'm not, you know, but I say my average host because nobody wants to be below average. So I say my average host collect just as many orders outside the party as they do at the party. And I usually get a really? Yeah, because you just never know. You need to ask all those people that you work with, okay? Just the way, same way we would encourage um, people to collect orders from a live party. I encourage it the same way. So anything that you normally say to collect those orders for outside orders for a live party, we're going to do the same thing. And we encourage the 5155, all right? So when, they're, when we're host coaching and we're, we're doing all that, I also tell them that the goal is to get to 30 going. 
and they're like 30. Okay. And I say, I know that sounds like a crazy lot, but it's totally not because what we've found with virtual parties, again, there's some education that has to take place because I've asked, I asked my hostesses, have you ever hosted a virtual party? 90% of them say no. They've never hosted one, so they don't know how it works. And so you are the expert. And so I say what we found with virtual parties is about half the people that click going will actually order. So when we've got 30 going, that's about 15 orders. And then plus those outside orders that you collect, that's easily an $800,000, $900,000 party. And then they're like, wow, okay. And then we're going to talk about, you know, the other things that go along with that. Another big thing, oh, I also give out invitations. I say include invitations. I include like five mini catalogs in there. I used to do 10. I, didn't, I don't think they were handing out 10. So I do five mini catalogs and I just put a label on the back that has, um, you're invited to Sally's uh, Facebook party and it has their link on there. And I tell them, I want you to put those in your purse, gym bag, diaper bag, whatever, and hand them out like candy. So they put those in there and they can hand those out to people. All right. Uh, the biggest thing, another big thing with the virtual parties, you want to make sure that you focus on edutainment. So you want to make sure it's educational and it's entertaining. Don't just post product pictures. Don't just post videos. Don't just post, uh, you know, a bunch of images from the virtual party groups. Make sure that there is a really good mix of recipes, products, um, videos, uh, you know, kitchen tips. We do a lot of games in our virtual parties on my team. So we usually start the day with the game and end the day with the game. It keeps people engaged and the game usually relates to whatever we're talking about. So for example, I have a healthy and a hurry template right now. And, um, tonight, uh, today we're talking about breakfast. And so I look up family feud breakfast. I Google it. And so my question for tonight was, um, what breakfast, name a breakfast food that's more like a dessert has nothing to do with Pampered Chef, but they are highly entertained and they're having fun, right? We want them to have fun because when we have, they have fun at parties, they're going to book more parties, right? So, um, but it talks, it's, we're talking about breakfast. We've been talking about breakfast all day. So make sure it's entertaining. I use a lot of GIFs or GIFs, however you want to say that. My husband corrects me all the time. It's apparently GIFs, so make sure you use lots of GIFs, the dancing, you know, whatever, um, stickers, um, exclamation marks. I, guys, I'm like laying in bed sometimes, like responding to people and I've got exclamation marks and the guy going like this because he's excited. They have no clue I'm laying there in my PJs. They think I'm excited all the time. So have fun with it. Um, also make sure you go live or you at least have a recorded video. I go live at least three times in my parties. I do a, um, you're opening your, your, opening like you would normally do at a um, live party. I video that. I have that on a video. I change it up each month depending on, you know, what's going on or what the specials are so I can show a couple of products. It's quick, two to three minutes. It needs to be short. And then I post it on my parties the day before the party starts. Um, I go live. I do like a freebie Friday prize drawing. So I go live and I draw the name out and I show the product and I'm super excited about that. And then I go live with a strong close. So, or sincere close. So I'm talking about hosting. I'm talking about the opportunity. I'm thanking them for coming. So they need to see your face while you're cooking in your kitchen. Just make videos, make a video of you making dinner and put that on your party. They want to see your face. They don't want to just talk to the person behind the screen. And you're going to make, you're going to build relationships that way. That's, it's huge. I've had so many of my hosts say, oh my gosh, it was so fun to see you on the party. So make sure you're doing that. And I know it's scary. A lot of my team, they're like, oh my gosh, I just went live and it freaked me out. They don't expect you to be perfect at all because they're not going to be perfect. You know, I do try to put my makeup on before I do it, um, or at least make sure I'm dressed, but <laughs> they don't really care what you look like. Just do it. You also want to make sure that you're sprinkling in those booking and recruiting seeds. So that could be comments. Let's say, you know, you're talking about the rock rock. You could post a comment that says, you know, oh my goodness, if you got, you know, we're chatting about the rock rock. Did you guys know you can get it for 60% off next month? How crazy is that? So just little things like that, that you would normally be doing at a live party as you're, if you do a station style show, as you're walking around they're like, oh my gosh, this rock rock is amazing. I know. Do you want to get it at 60% off? So just things like that. Make sure that you're commenting, make sure you're sprinkling those in. Um, 
Make sure you're doing a Q&A. We do, you know, you can do Q&A at live parties. Make sure you're doing a Q&A at your virtual parties. And it's actually easier at a virtual party for new people because then they can message your director and say, how do I respond to this? I don't know how, what, what does that mean? How, what do you have to do to be active? So they can send you those questions. I get all sorts of screenshots of weird questions. Um, so they can do that as well. So that's kind of kind of good training too. Um, let's see, make sure that I do a couple of games for recruiting, uh, like some income type games, like guess my first paycheck, um, or I give them a profile of someone that, you know, on my team, and they have to guess their paycheck, whatever. So just sprinkle in some games like that. Number one reason you become a Pamper Chef consultant, I have pictures of the three kits and I get them to try and find the products that are in all three kits. Anything, it doesn't matter. Something fun to get them talking about the opportunity. Um, and then the other big thing that I did in the very beginning when I first started was, you know, I, I really tried to make it like a live party, so I asked, everyone about hosting. I asked everyone because I knew I needed to get my calendar full. So um, I used to do groups, now I do events so I can kind of see who's going. But on the group, I would just look at who, I went through my party and I looked at who was interacting and then I would message them. Oh my gosh, Carolyn, you, I had so much fun with you at Angela's party. Um, I hope you had a blast. Since the party's wrapping up, um, I just wanted to check in and make sure, or see if you were, were interested in getting your friends together on Facebook and earning some free goodies for your kitchen. And most of the time they're like, yeah. I mean, I get so many yeses that way. They're like, I, or I totally forgot I was going to message you or I was going to comment. They just don't know until you, I mean, they're not going to respond sometimes until you ask. They don't know that they need to respond on the post. So make sure you're personally reaching out to them. Um, I do get some that say no, and I do get some that read the message and never respond, and that's okay. But if you're constantly asking, you're never going to run out of bookings. I also give my host a little goodie if she gets three bookings. So I'm teaming up with my host. There's the day before the party closes, I have a booking post, and her suggestion for that day is to tag three friends that she thinks would make awesome hostesses and personally reach out to three. So I'm getting my hostess to work with me to get those three bookings from her party. And you'd be surprised how many do. <laughs> they work to get those bookings because they want those extra 50% off items. Um, the other thing I'll say about virtual parties is make sure you don't make yourself insane and start them all over the place. I start all of my parties on the same day. I start them on a Monday because otherwise you're going to have some starting and stopping and all over, the, you're just going to be all over the place. So we use templates in, on my team and uh, it's posting the same game. It's posting the same stuff. So I know all my parties are talking about breakfast today. We're talking about lunch tomorrow. So I'm answering similar questions on each party, which means I can maximize my time. I can do four or five parties without making myself crazy. Okay. Um, I host coach on the same days. I close parties on the same days. It's streamline your systems, guys, and you can multiply your time so much faster. Make sure you're using some sort of software to post. You should not be sitting at your computer posting stuff to Facebook parties. That's just insane. There's things, send share, post my party, all those things out there that you can pay, you know, 10 bucks a month, and uh, that's life-saving. Find a format that works for you. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, how long are your parties? Do you do events or groups? I'm going to tell you, I've had $1,000 parties that are 10-day parties. I've had $1,000 parties that are four-day parties. I've had $1,000 parties that are seven-day parties. It's all about the host coaching. I mean, if I could scream that from the rooftops, I would. It's about your relationships. It's about your host coaching. That's what's going to get you there. It's about getting your attendance up. Um, you know, there is no, from what I've seen, there is no magic length Everybody wants a silver bullet. There's just not a magic length. Find one that works for you and your schedule. I don't care if you use groups. I don't care if you use events. I personally like events because I can measure. I can measure how many they're inviting. I can measure how many are going, but I'm not going to fuss at you if you do, you know, groups. If that's the format that works for you, then stick with that. Um, let's see. The biggest thing is being consistent. You know, I don't know about you guys, but if you know, the magic formula is two parties a week for live parties. If you haven't done parties for a few weeks, you kind of fall out of the saddle. You know, you're like, oh, you're rusty trying to get back into it. Just schedule four or five a week or however many, whatever your goal is for your, for your shows. Be consistent and book that many a week. It, you're, it's going to flow. You're going to, and ask every, I mean, it's, you just have to be consistent. 
I found um, I had a really hard time getting back into it after January. I took, I didn't start back until the 15th is when I purposely started my parties back. So I had a few weeks off and I was like, it was really, really rusty, but now I'm back in my groove and I'm good to go because I've got four and five and six parties happening each week. Um, let's see. I do take a week off every now and then to catch up. So you could always schedule a week off, you know, every six weeks or so just to kind of catch up. That's fine. But again, be consistent, be consistent with your follow-up, make sure you're asking every guest, make sure you're sharing the opportunity with every guest and your host, Claudia will tell you that your hostesses, you guys know that. Um, Let's see, what else? Um, create templates, like I said, you can do, what we've started doing is theme parties. So that really works well instead of doing like a monthly, um, we used to do a monthly template. Now we do theme parties, so like Healthy in a Hurry, we're gonna do a Death by Chocolate for February. You could do One Pot Meals, you could do Mexican and Margaritas. Use the party packs. All those resources are there, just use that. Um, I focus on one, um, power tool, that's the word I was looking for. I focus on one power tool a day and then the complimentary products that go along with that. There's so much out there, guys. There really is. Um, Pamper Chef does a really good job of giving us those images. Pull stuff from the Pamper Chef YouTube channel. <clears throat> Easy. Show videos of how to make recipes. I mean, there's so, so much out there. You can piece together an outline easily. So that is all I have about virtual parties, but I'm sure you guys have questions. I kind of wanted to leave it open where you guys could ask me questions. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, I do have a question for you before we yeah. open it up for questions. So on average, um, can you tell us a consultant that does four virtual parties a week consistently? Um, do you have an idea on average how much money they make? Um, sure. So one of my, my, um, my newer consultants, she just started, she just fast tracked. Um, she started, so she started three months ago in December, she did 6,000 in sales and she's consistently doing four or five. And that brings her how much income? Oh, that's a whole lot of income. Cause then you're elite seller and you get the extra 2%. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot <laughs> of money. <laughs> yeah. So you, you know, guys, the, the thing is consistency. And, and I think what happens with virtual parties, if we just, you know, sometimes just do one here and there, and just like Mary just said, you know, we kind of get rusty and you're not really in it and there's not excitement because it's just one party here and there. Um, so I think if it's one thing we definitely learn is if you're going to run one party and you're going to set it up and you're going to answer all these questions and you're going to send your host those daily things, run multiple at the same time. So the best thing that you can do for your business now is if you want more, you know, find your next Monday and say by next Monday, I'm going to start four virtual parties and group them together. So um, awesome. Who's got questions? Unmute yourself. Bottom left. If you're on the phone, I believe you have to hit star six. I have a question. Do you have um, many virtual parties that where you're host coaching and the host is really good, really engaged, but you have absolutely no engagement? Oh yeah. So I, um, one thing I, you know, we have that, was it 20% cancellation rate for live parties that you plan for those? I call them, I call it a 20% dud rate. So you're going to have dud parties. You're just going to have it. I don't, with virtual parties, I don't find it as much as, as, as much as a, a reschedule as it is just a bleh party. Um, you're just going to have them. So I plan yeah. for those and I, you know, I teach my team, you just accept it and keep rolling. That's all you got to do because you're going to have them. I have them. I have shows that don't qualify. You know, it happens. <laughs> I like how you compare that with cooking shows, though, because we always say, you know, overbook yourself with cooking shows. People are going to cancel and reschedule. And if we just expect that there's going to be some dud parties and overbook, then it won't bug us, right? Right. It doesn't upset me. I'm like, oh, well, there it is. There's that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has a question? Troy, go ahead. Okay. So, Two things. So in that initial message, when you're sending, um, when you're coaching your host to send out the individual message, are they including a link to the Facebook event in that? I haven't coached them to do that. I have found that some of my hosts get really confused if I give them too many things to copy, paste, link, whatever. So I just tell them to go on their party um, and, you know, click through their, their friends that they've invited and just personally message. I tell them, I try not to overwhelm them. So I, I actually start coaching them. My parties, I do two days of pre-party. So I actually start them on about Friday 
um, I set the parties up like Wednesday ish and they started inviting. And then I say on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, their suggestion is to post on the party first of all. And I give them something to post, but to personally message 10 people. And that way they're not like, Oh my gosh, I got to message a hundred people. And that way it's bite size. And you know, and I tell them the goal of the pre-party is to get your attendance up to 30. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Um, and are you giving them like a daily recommended activities to engage in? Okay. And you're doing that. Are you sending that to them via Facebook message? Have you ever put your hosts in a group so that everybody's getting the same information at the same time? Or how do you do that? I've done both. Um, and I have, you know, I have very successful people on my team that do groups. I've done um, the past several months. I've been doing Facebook messenger. Um, I, this month I've been trying groups again Honestly, it's just whatever I feel like. I tend to fly by the seat of my pants the morning of and like I'm sending a message because it depends on kind of what what the um what the <laughs> what the party's doing. And so um I'm trying the groups again this month just to see what happens and test it out. So I think it's whatever you're comfortable with. I do feel like my host did the suggestions more when I personally messaged them. Um, I do tag them in the group when I do the post and you can schedule posts in a group, which is awesome. And you can tag them. So I tag all the hosts. So they actually see it. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I've done both. I, I don't know that there's a secret, but I do feel like I was better at building relationships and I have more conversation with my hosts when I was personally messaging it to them. Okay. Thank you. But I, I don't have like, I mean, I haven't seen drastic differences one way or the other. It's really just depends on it. It also depends on how many shows that we have that week. If I've only got two hosts, I'm not going to do like a host group. I'm just going to message. If it's five or six, then it probably does make more sense for my time to do a group. Who else has questions for this rock star? Anybody? Amy, did you have a question? Amy's yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, about the sending the invite, the invitations, the cards with your packet, um, because I've not done that. I'm, I'm, I'm following you on everything else. Now, the, are you having them actually mail them out or just hand them out? I just tell them to stick them in their purse and hand them out. Okay. Yeah, or gym bag or diaper bag or whatever they carry around. I just, and I do the mini catalogs because, and I explain to them, I like the mini catalogs because Pamper Chef has been around for so long. They, people really just want to know what's new. And so this gives them a quick snapshot of what's new and you don't have to tote around the big catalogs and it's cheaper for us. Okay, so you're actually giving them, the, you're, for the invitations, you're giving them the mini catalogs to mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So my host packet is, I kind of divided it. I use the folders. And so I, I mean, I'm spending a little bit on my host packets, but they look good. Um, and I use, I, I give them, you know, their host catalog for their wish list, and then the host flyer and the, you know, the kit credit coupon and the life taste great brochure. And then I, they've got two catalogs to pass out two order forms. And they've got five little mini invitations with a sticker on the back that has their, um, has their link. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But I walk them through that whole packet on the phone call. I just, well, I have not found messaging to be effective in that area. And um, it's kind of like if you're going to invest the $7 to mail that packet, then you need to do that phone call, right? Absolutely. Really use it. Yeah. Yeah. So I probably need to, I, I'm, I'm going to need to probably mm -hmm. add the, the phone call in. I do put a letter in my, in my packet when I send it. Now, like right now I'm running low on the mini catalogs, but I have plenty of the postcard invitations. Just use those. I mean, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I just, if I'm just not one to order a bunch of catalogs when the new ones are going to be coming out soon. So yeah. So just use those. That's not, I mean, yeah, just use those. Either That's way. totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The phone call, um, I have hosts ask me, you know, how long, how long is the call going to take? And I say 18 minutes. That's exactly how long my host calls take. I mean, every single time, like 17 to 18 minutes, unless it's a really chatty host and we start chatting about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Who else has a question? I have a question. Yeah. Um, 
when you have all those parties going on, are you constantly in there answering questions and stuff? Or do you have designated times that you check on your parties? That's a really good question. So make sure you just kind of find a system or a rhythm that works for you. So I always start my day with the game. um, And it's usually like a guessing game and I mix it up every now and then. Um, So my, my posts start around eight o'clock in the morning. So my kids normally have snack time around 10 where they're like, mom, I'm done learning for right now. So I need to go have a snack and I usually need a break too. And so I will just hop on my phone. I don't even open my computer and I can go into each party. So-and-so is close. This was 63. So-and-so, you know, keep going. Blah, blah, blah. It's literally 30 seconds. Just did, 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 done. I hop off and then usually I go back around lunchtime, another 30 second check-in, did, 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 did. So and so is closer, da, 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 done. And then afternoons is really my office time. That's when my kids have computer time and they leave me alone. And so I can sit down and then I'm going to go in, I'm going to answer product questions. I'm going to narrow down the winner and end and, and the game. And that's when I'm really kind of communicating with them a little bit more. And then I sign off and I'm, you know, I'm working on team stuff. But, you know, meanwhile, I got stuff posting, so I'm not having to post. And then in the evenings is I probably spend a little bit more time you know, interacting with them during the evening game, answering more questions, doing follow-up, whatever, whatever needs to happen. So yeah, find whatever pockets of time you have. You'll kind of figure out your rhythm and your guests will figure out what the rhythm is. Um, my hostesses, they're like, yeah, I notice because I've had that question. Are you on Facebook all the time? No, I'm not on Facebook all the time. I have, you know, I have set times that I kind of go and check in. Does that make sense? Yeah, so just find those pockets of time that you have and that's when you check on your parties. And I have one of my directors, she works at a sleep lab. And so she, her hours are just crazy. And so what she did, she uses our template, but she just moves the games around to where she's actually awake and coherent. And that way she can interact with people. (laughs) So just make it work for you. Yeah, and I always say, you know, you don't need to be on there like all the time and answering questions right away. If you can, great. But you know, that also shows that you're not attached to Facebook 24 seven. Yeah. It's a good recruiting tool too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anybody I have a know? question. Yeah. yeah. Um, are, how, around how many posts do you usually post a day? I do eight. I found that's a happy spot for me. Um, I do one in the morning, which is the game. I do three at 11 and three at three and then one at night. So I batch post them that way their phone is not blowing up all day long. (laughs) Um, But it's a mix. It's not all products. It's, you know, a mix of recipes, kitchen tips, products, games. It's, it's not, you want to be careful with product overwhelm. Um, that's one thing that we found with the virtual party pilot programs is that you just, if you're posting constant, constantly about products, they just, they don't know what to pick. It's like, this is why we don't bring our whole kitchen to a kitchen party. You mm-hmm. know, we just bring what we're using. Otherwise they're like, I don't know what to choose. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. We have one more minute for Mary. Anyone else have any questions? So Mary, um, just one more question. So from the moment you kind of decided, you know, hey, I need to get back on this. I need to book some parties. Can you kind of share how your income grew and how it changed? (laughs) Um, So in May, uh, let me think. uh, Let me think. Okay, so I went to conference in July. Um, and that was a May, the very last week of May is when I started booking virtual parties and really trying to figure them all out. So July, we went to conference that year. It wasn't in August, it was in July. And I went to conference and I was like watching, I was a struggling director. Like I said, I had three people active on my team and what my top seller messaged me during conference and said she was quitting. And I was like, crap, what am I going to do now? You know? And so, um, I was at conference and I was like, you know what? I was like, I want to be a senior director by conference of next year. And so, because I saw all the recognition and all the cool stuff. So we promoted to advanced team October 1st of that year. And then we promoted to senior team on April 1st of the next year. And then now we're an executive team on January 1st. So it has been exponential growth, like 100%, 100%. It's just by turning it up just making sure I had at least 12 parties booked every single month. For me, that's a happy place. And with virtual parties, you know, uh, I feel like you can do more because you don't have to leave your house. So I can easily do 12 parties where I don't know if I can fit in eight 
cooking shows, right? So I can, I can do those. So yeah, I was consistently doing 12. I do a little bit more now, but yeah, can 12 shows. So I went from, I don't, I don't even know what that, inc- I haven't looked at what the income level is, but it was pretty darn quick. It was pretty darn quick. So I think, let me think last year, the year that I was, I transitioned from director to advanced director, I made 27,000. And then last year I made 57. So that's pretty substantial growth. Yeah. So what would you that- guys do with that much, right? <laughs> yeah. $50,000, almost $60,000 a year just from working from home, right? But working from home consistently and treating it like a business, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Consistency is the key. Yay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mary, for joining us and coaching us a little bit in the virtual party world. Can we give her a round of applause? Yeah, show me your hands. So is that helpful for everyone? Okay, so listen, guys. Um, So thank you, Mary, so much for joining. And um, if we need any more help, I'll reach out to you. (laughs) Sounds good. I think we should be good. Um, And guys, for the ones that are on, I just wanted to let you guys know that in the pin post on the Bizarre Bullet Train page, I haven't like put it out there yet because I, you know, just want to kind of get some feelers on it. Um, the get started with your first virtual party link has been completely updated to match exactly what these ladies are saying as far as a quick, easy, healthy theme, a very simple five day party with very simple instructions. So you can utilize it, you can copy the template and you can utilize it for your team. Um, and there's also a whole checklist on follow up because I think sometimes we miss that we do the part Party and we have a great party and then you know we have a great month and we never took the time to follow up and make sure we get the bookings from the party so we can have that consistent business um, so anyways the link has been updated for all of you guys that are on this call and anyone who watches and replays knows it's been updated you can share it with your teams um, I just want to kind of get a feeling for it to make sure that, you know, there's no errors or anything, but I double and triple checked it. So I've been working on that and kind of getting my feelers out there because, um, I, you know, I do a lot of cooking shows and I do some virtual parties, but I'm definitely ready to, um, start having consistent virtual parties and at least four virtual parties a week. So I hope this was helpful. Was this good? Did you guys learn anything? Okay, so awesome. Well, listen, our next virtual meeting is going to be every third Monday, all right? So put that on your calendar now. Um, and I hope you guys have a good night. Um, are there any other questions? Anything else I can help answer? While I have you all, everybody out ready to rock the virtual world and cooking shows. You can still do cooking shows. I love my cooking shows, right? All right, guys, have a good night.